Hello, welcome to this Q&A. Uh, I'm Hans Kesting, uh, I'm the actor, and this is Ivo van der Hoven. I'm Ivo, I'm the director. And in this box, Hans, what's there? There are questions, Ivo. Yeah. And now oh. the, it's very easy. <laughs> this Q&A, I take out, for instance, I take out this question, and then I give it to you. Okay, good, let's and see. And then you unfold it. Ah, that's very difficult, I find, because there are for a few, of course. But then I would say it's Roman tragedies for me. Yeah, Roman tragedies. But okay. we could also say Angels in America. Uh, yeah, Angels in America. America. Yes. Yeah, indeed. For me, since I was young, actually, that's a long time ago, I, even when we had no money at all, I tried to get a a group of actors, a team, uh, some very small at the time, two, three, four, because I believed already when I was 21, 20, when I did my first production, that working together on different productions again and again and again, in that time it was like relationships of two, three productions, it was two, three years, not more than that, but I believed that you get better because you you know each other, there's nothing to prove really, but there is something ambitious to make artistically. And that's why I still believe that working with an ensemble of actors is the greatest thing on the, in, on the earth. I think also for actors, but Hans can tell himself better, that uh, when you work together for over a long time, you get more critical to each other, but in a good way. You know, it's not like in, in a negative way. And I think the theater gets better from it. Do you remember the year when we first worked together? The year, not with the production, yes. Uh, Morning Becomes Electra. 1989. Uh, okay. 1989 was the first time we worked together. Yeah, but Ivo says it. It's, it's the, the thing of doing one production after another. You, the trust. You don't have to prove anything anymore. I trust Ivo in his, in his directions that he gives me. Ivo trusts me in trying other things out that he couldn't think of. And so you try to make the best possible uh, 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 play uh, performance that you that you can imagine. So yeah, it's uh, I, I I I'm very I feel very happy and privileged to be working so long with with Evo and and other directors like Robert Ike, for instance, who is a resident director at our company. So yeah, it's it's for our, the theater. I think it's good to have a, a long lasting relationship. Of course, our ensemble has changed. I mean, the ensemble we started with in 2001, what was it, 2002? 2002, isn't the same ensemble that is there anymore. New actors went and actors, uh, uh, new actors came. And some of, I'm, I'm one of the older actors, uh, of course. But the, the ensemble has always been an interesting mix of, of, of personalities, young and old. So, um, and it's always exciting to, 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 be, to be confronted with a new face, with a new voice, with a new sound, with a new way of thinking within the company. So uh, there's never a standstill in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the way the ensemble works together. Most of the time I'm at the birth of a production. That means like the choice of a play or the choice of a movie, because I did a lot of movie scripts on stage, or the choice the last years I do more and more book adaptations, which we do now also in, uh, with Who Killed My Father. So most of the time uh, I'm making that choice, but it doesn't mean I'm there alone. For Jan Verschwijfeld, who is the set designer, uh, he is the first reader together with me when, uh, uh, when I think this could be of interest or when a dramaturg uh, uh, comes with something like Ivo, you should read this, things like that, because that happens. Eh? It happens that people bring stuff to me more and more and that's uh, a great thing because then you're not alone. Uh, so the decision I take but uh, uh, the influence of, of Jan in this case is quite big but it can go both ways because for instance, View from the Bridge which has become very famous uh, in London, uh, uh, I didn't want to do. And it's Jan who really pushed me to do it. And he said, Evil, this is really the play for you to do. I didn't believe in it. Even the first day of rehearsal, I thought, well, I'm gonna do this. But, and then I discovered, of course, after three days of rehearsal, yes, he is totally right. We start most of the time a year before rehearsals to work on a production. And that's an intense process. And that's then the team working together. Uh, on two tracks. One is uh, uh, a dramaturgical track that I, I do with my dramaturg, and a different track that goes at the same time is the visual. You know, how are we, it's not only what we're going to do, because that's what I established with my dramaturg, and also how are we going to do it. 
you just make choices. I mean, you have the, the, the brother Luke, you have the Caleb character, and you have Doctor, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Dr. Trailer. trailer. Dr. Trailer. So, you, I mean, there they are, brother Luke, of course, goes through the whole play. Caleb and Doctor Trailer are, are only, uh, both have one scene. And they are abusers. They yeah, and they are all that. abusers. And so, they, uh, so you have to look for the abuse in a different way. I mean, Brother Luke is very smiling, smiling all the time, benignly to him, and uh, but, but in the meanwhile, you feel, who? And Caleb is just beating yes. him up, basically. Yeah. Beating him up every time. And Dr. Trailer is a sadist. So yeah, you make choices, simple choices, and how to, 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 how they walk, how they stand, how they talk. And, 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 and when those choices are clear, yeah, the, char the characters are clear. It's not that I have to make a whole transformation in my mind during the play. Now I was not, now I'm not Brother Luke anymore. Now I'm going to become Caleb. That's not how it works. I mean, you know when Caleb comes on, you, you, this is the moment where I'm going to be him. I say the first line, Caleb Porter, I, I, I say to Jude, and then he says, Jude said Francis, and then the scene has been started. And then it's there, so it's... So a lot of people after the production tell me, but it must be hard for Hans. Doesn't he take it that at home. Well, uh, yeah, I, 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 that's, I must say, I, I don't like it at all to be so uh, terrible, to be so uh, mean at all. I mean, uh, it's, and I know I'm a big guy, so sometimes I can really be, yeah, maybe a bit threatening. Too, yeah, threatening. At, and maybe I, 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 sometimes I, maybe I go a bit too far in my, in my, but I mean, it's not something I particularly like, although I, I like, of course, that it has such an effect on, 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 on the audience. But um, yeah, it's, 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 um, the whole play is such a heavy atmosphere, and the whole production is such a heavy atmosphere. It, it affects all the actors. We talked about it in Edinburgh. There's something about the play, well, the, the book, of course, that, that makes everybody a bit heavy in their heads. After and, and before. Gets, it's, it's like a slow killer, the, yeah. the production. You know, it gets under your skin. Also, as an audience, I hear it from everybody. It starts a little bit, well, the guy seems to be okay. There are some little problems here and there, and a little, you know, conflict and things like that, but not really. And then it like, it's like, poison, you know, and it, it poisons you before you are aware of it. I can only say, I only played in a, in a different lang language twice. One time we did Rocco and his brothers, the Pasolini film? Yeah. Uh, 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 that's Visconti film. Uh, and that premiered in Bochum, in the Ruhr Triennale. Uh, and we played it in German. I wasn't particularly fond of playing it in German, because yeah, I was happy when we played it finally in Amsterdam in Dutch because you feel freer. And now, uh, 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 Who Killed My Father is the first time I perform in English. Yeah. But so. there is a little story to this also because, of course, we were going to do this all earlier and COVID made it happen now, eh? you know, a, a few years later. But you learned the text already in? Well, we, we premiered in, in 2020, right? And I started to learn in 2019. I started to learn in 2019 the Dutch text, and then as soon as I heard that it was going to be in English, I started to work on it in, 2000, in January, no, in December 2020, I started to learn the English text. And so how did you do that? <laughs> there is a story to which you have to tell. Well, I have a little Dachshund, Dachshund dog, a sausage dog. And uh, normally when I rehearse lines, yeah, I do it while walking the dog. I go to the park, I walk in the park for an hour on the beach. So now this dog have, must have heard the whole monologue about a million times. Because he does it every day. Yeah. Also when it was postponed, he yeah. kept doing the, the ritual yeah. every morning. Every, in the morning, I, in the morning I do I do a few I do a few, few pages, or I tell myself that story. How does it go in English? Yeah. So to, to test myself, and the whole thing I do during the long walk for two years. For two years. So I mean, I, I, I'm I'm so ripe to just do it now in London, <laughs> regardless the result. He's really this ready. Is, I mean, yeah. I did my best okay. but, um, yeah so it's it's a uh, so it's, it's so, but um, I, I feel more at ease now with the English than I felt ever felt with the German in Rocco and it brought but yeah we'll see how it goes yeah okay well as far as the acting is concerned of course I'm, I, I'm, I'm in all those big productions like Roman tragedies Kings of War Angel in America you name it so then you are with all the other actors and he was very efficient in his time and he gives you all the time that you need and he needs but then he moves on the, and, and then, and then there, there are spectacles, there's enormous sets, sound, light, whatever what have you. And now on this monologue, you're working on the square centimeter. So you have all the attention from the whole team on you. So it's a very intimate, uh, small process. And I loved uh, rehearsing on it because, yeah, as always, we had lots of fun. We worked very well and uh, we, we made it in less than two weeks. 
who, ki who killed my father. And um, yeah, I mean, you have all the attention of Ivo, you have Vian was Vijfeld, Vijfeld, on you. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, you feel very seen and, 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 and there's a constant discussion about what you're doing. So yeah, it was lovely to work with such a small uh, production. It reminded for me, the, to my father, you know, of my father who, who had died uh, 12 years ago already, but he was a pharmacist in a very small village. And he was a real pharmacist, you know, the, the moment that shampoo and so, uh, uh, he had to do that, he, he hated it. He really made his, his, his uh, the, the things himself, the syrups and all these things. So he made it himself, the smells were all, always in the house of the thing. But he made it also with kind of uh, milligrams. So that was like, who said that I weigh Yeah, uh, uh, to, to weigh things, or to how you call it, 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 a scale. A, a scale. scale, so the scales were like using milligrams. You know, when I, I and I, 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 suddenly I thought, well, doing a monologue with somebody is really working with milligrams. Because everything what he or she does, you know, in every light situation, everybody will see, you know, if it goes wrong or it's not good enough. With a big production like Age of Rage, for instance, uh, which just was at the Barbican, you know, it's like working with kilos, uh, you know, and tons. And that's what I also love. And, uh, but I love also the minimal, the minimal art of doing a monologue. I, I can give the, the, the simple, a simple thing, namely, uh, but it's also a difficult thing, and also in the London context, in the English context, because I know for, for first time directors, it's a hard time also now, you know, to get a job, and you're not get paid a lot for the job. Uh, uh, but I think at the end of the day, you have to make choices that you have to be sincere to yourself and never make opportunistic choices. That's my, that's my guideline in my life. And sometimes you don't have a lot of money, sometimes you will have, sometimes you will be lucky, unlucky, but it's best to be unlucky with something that you really wanted to do. I always think of an actor, you know, who, who will be the next that I want to do it with. At a certain moment I said to Hans, well Hans, uh, I don't know when because we will have to find something, but I, the next time that I do a, a, a monologue I would like to do it with you. And it took, I don't think, a year or two, and then suddenly I was in Paris and I, was, I saw the first day that it was released this book in French, uh, Who Killed My Father, Qui a Tué Mon Père, from, from Edouard Louis. And, and I immediately, I think I, I read it, of course, because it's only 50 pages, so I read it in one go. Uh, I immediately think, this is the thing for Hans. I, I called you, I think, and I don't know if, if you read it in... No, I had never heard of Edward Louis. No, 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 but... No. I, really? No, I had never, until that, when oh. you told me, I didn't, I had never, I, he didn't come across my, 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 yeah, I didn't know him. Yeah, so, I, well, I'm I very said, happy that I know him now. Read it. Yeah. I, I don't know if you read it in, in French or in no, Dutch. No, I read it in Dutch. It I, was I read, in Dutch. Yeah. I read all the three books he had written until that time. Yeah. So, and that was like a, yeah, a, 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 that's how it came together. And I think he, what is really great about him, that he is, his writing is very personal. It's always about himself. It's always autobiographical. He talks about his youth as a, a very poor youth with his father drinking too much at home. A very uh, intense, traumatic experience as, as a young gay, you know, in a very masculine community where to being to be gay was like a death penalty almost but he is uh, he combines it with a very uh, uh, with very political big political statements so he sees his little story in a in a wider context and that's a combination i like what he, what he writes is relatable for everyone also yeah. all for, for all, you don't have to have had a poor upbringing you don't have to be gay whatever to be to be to to, to be drawn into his work that's what i find that's is true. amazing for such a, a young guy what is he only 25 or yeah he's now he? 27 i think 27. but but he is really he has written three book uh, four books now and well they are translated all over the world you know and it's like bestsellers well we hope you uh, enjoyed uh, and you our come answers. to the theater you come to the to the young vid to see who killed my father and uh, well uh, hope to see you here. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay,